Hello guys, my name is Miguel Severo, I'm the creator of the Voxel Farm menu. You will find a lot of new stuff in this update. The reason why is this is not me anymore working alone in this project. We have now a team of engineers at Voxel Farm that are working on these new cool features. When I'm looking at a graphics engine, the features I like the most are those you cannot really see, you cannot see them working, but they're really there and they make a big difference on what you're experiencing. Over the past few months, we did a lot of improvements to the engine. What you're seeing right now, even if it looks pretty much the same as we used to have, now it's it's uh, significantly better. Every block I add now, it creates a much sharper and much cleaner transition to whatever was there before. So you would see all these uh, blocks now, when whenever they meet the terrain, they have very sharp, very clean geometry. And this is not only for terrain and other material interfaces, this is something we are applying to every tool we do. Okay, here's one that I really like. So if you are able to set voxels, you could do a lot of damage. I mean, you could build an entire city if you wanted, just setting one voxel at a time. But a voxel is pretty small, it's like 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, depending how you configure it. So, man, you have to cover an entire city have to create a lot of buildings going voxel by voxel it's not a good idea you you need some help we have this new tool you give it one block of space like a big chunk of space and within that space you can decide to run a little program and this program it can be really smart it can break down space into subspaces so everything that has a structure you can write one of those simple little programs and the program will output the structure you, you want. The thing is, as you change the input box for this, you get different com combinations. So if the structure you're building, let's say it's, it's a columnade for a temple, as you provide more space, uh, you get more columns. So you don't get distortions. The, the programs, they know how to deal with the changes in the environment. So it, it could even get to the point where some part of the programs, they actually latch to the terrain, to the ground, and you get structures that they adapt depending on where you place them. We have written a large number of these programs, we call them grammars, because they are similar to how uh, the grammar for a traditional language is defined. And it's, it is kind of funny, but you would see that uh, pretty much everything that has a structure, uh, it can be defined by something that looks like a grammar. So uh, the spoken language is one example, but also uh, the other things, you know, that are, they have a structure like a book or a weapon or a car you can express those as a system of uh, things that subdivide into other things and so on and one of the ways you can express that is by writing a grammar so you don't have to be a programmer or you don't need to understand a lot of about how things uh, work with computers to be able to write uh, these grammars actually the person we have writing this it's an architect by training so this is a guy who studied architecture it's not a programmer or it's not a, a software developer who's doing this this is essentially an extension of his training as an architect what you're seeing here we're still working on this system there are still a few things we need to figure out but this is very promising i think we're gonna see a lot of this in the future Let's move on to something else. We're gonna clear a little bit of space here to be able to do an experiment on just one voxel. What you will see here is a new system we have to play with voxels. Essentially we now can build tools that are more sensitive and they can alter voxels in more interesting ways. What you see here is very similar to our old smoothing tool, but this one is now using the new system and that allows us to have a much finer approach to how many iterations we, we do. So now we can have more iterations, we can smooth by smaller increments. But it's not only about smoothing. With the new framework for the tools, we can very quickly prototype and create new tools. So here you see a tool that actually grows the surface of the voxels instead of reducing them. 
We also rewrote how the voxelization works. And voxelization is something that is very important to any voxel engine. This is how you get assets that were created in polygonal form. Essentially, there are meshes. How you get those meshes into voxel form. And why it's important? Well, the sharper, the more clean your, your voxels turn out to be once you import from a mesh, the better your engine is. So here you can see I have imported a very simple mesh, I have rotated the mesh, and I have voxelized the mesh. All the features I got from this in my voxels, they are quite sharp, and this is something I, I, I look for. Also, whenever I delete from this mesh, I'm using uh, just another mesh, but I'm using it to subtract space. You see how clean the boundaries they are now. We actually find out a way to encode double the precision for the features we have in our surfaces, but we still use the same amount of data. And I'm gonna leave you with the kind of feature that is so much in your face that actually requires no explanation. So as you can see, we are in a fairly high place. We are sitting on top of a cliff. And I think I will just let the video explain it on its own.